Standing here in your presence In a grace so relentless I am one By perfect love Wrapped within the arms of heaven In a peace that lasts forever Sinking
by grace and all my heart is yours all fear removed I breathe you in I lean into your love oh
What is up, Northridge Church? How's everybody feeling tonight? Come on, it's not a worship. You can do better than that. Make some noise for me tonight. Yeah. Well, the cool thing is, is we have one thing on the agenda tonight. Just one thing. And that's to worship our King. To lift our praises high to a God who is deserving of it. And so the cool thing is, is we have three campuses coming together. So if you're from the Greece campus, make some noise for me. Yeah. What about our Webster campus? You make some noise. And our Arondekoy campus, make some noise. Yeah, that's the cool thing about church is we might meet in different locations, but we are one body coming together to lift up our king. Yeah. So let me pray for us. Lord, there's nothing, nothing like your presence. And God, we just ask that you would fill this place with more of you. And so God, may we forget about the stress at work tonight. May we forget about the struggle that we're dealing with. And may we lift our eyes up to our Father who cares for us. May tonight be completely, 100% only about you. Thank you that we can come together freely without having to worry about someone coming to harm us. But that we can freely come and worship you. And I pray today that is exactly what we would do that we would worship you, God, that we would give you praise because you are a marvelous, magnificent, powerful, caring God. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take a second, meet somebody you haven't met before, shake their hand. You know, worship is an amazing thing. It's a powerful thing. In fact, God's word says that when we praise him, he inhabits our praise. That he, we actually, when we worship God, we invite him to this very place. And God's presence changes everything. It provides healing, it provides freedom. And so my one question for you tonight is, why would you hold back from that? So tonight I challenge you in this moment as we start tonight, don't hold back. Forget about all your circumstances and let's step into the presence of God through our worship. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. 
A song will sing for all of time. The grave is empty. I am free. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, rescued me. And I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing.
Yeah. 
He's given us. There was a knock on our front door. It was my neighbor. She said, I assume by now you've heard about Brooke, right? Well, Brooke is our oldest daughter. She had taken our van and she had driven to pick up two of her sisters as well as a couple of their friends. And I said, no, I, I haven't heard about Brooke. What, what's happened? And she said, well, apparently there's been an accident. And I'm afraid I really don't know much more. <sighs> Top 10 things every parent wants to hear, right? <laughs> Well, you know, I, I immediately jumped on my cell phone and called one of my daughters that I knew had her phone on her, and she reassured me that though there had been a, a pretty serious accident, that thankfully no one was seriously injured. We were very grateful. But I remember in that moment, I had this all-consuming desire. In that moment, I had this, th this, this desire that I couldn't get away from, and my wife had the very same desire. We have to go right now. We have to be with our daughters. We can't stay here. We have to be with them. That was the only thing we could think of. We're going to drop everything else. In fact, we just forgot everything we were just doing because we have to go be with our girls. Now, I suppose I could have just stayed on the phone with them. I, I could have just talked to Kaylee and I said, you know, Kaylee, why don't you pass the phone around to your sisters? Why don't we talk about what happened? I, I could have said, you know, um, let me reassure you of my care for you, of my concern for what happened to you from a distance. I could have done that, but that just wasn't good enough. I had to be with them. And I think that reminds me that there are just some moments in life where information and even communication simply isn't enough. It requires our very presence. I think that's the way our relationship with God works as well. You know, God in his sovereignty, he really could have concluded I've given them my message. I've given them, them my word. I've told them of my care and concern for them. Isn't that enough? But God didn't stop there. He gave us himself. You see, he understood that there would be some moments, some situations in the human experience where information and communication simply wouldn't cut it. And so he gave us his very presence. In fact, Jesus, just before he was going to leave his disciples, he said, I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you alone. He said this to them. He said, I, in John 14, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. And then later in Romans, Paul celebrates the giving of God's spirit. He says this in Romans 5. God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You know what I love about what Paul says there? He doesn't say, the Holy Spirit who will be given to us. He doesn't say the Holy Spirit who has partially been given to us. No, he says the Holy Spirit who has been given to us in full. Don't you know that we know a God and serve a God that doesn't do anything halfway? And when he gives you himself, he gives you all of himself. He talks about the sort of opposite side of this coin in Romans chapter 8, just a few chapters later. He says this, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. So if you don't have the Spirit of Christ in you, you don't belong to Christ at all. But if you do belong to Christ, then that means you have the Spirit of God within you. If you have some of Him, you have all of Him tonight. And I want this to, to be a captivating thought for you as, as you continue this night and as you leave this place. Remember this, God is always fully present with you. If you know Jesus Christ then God is always fully present with you. You don't need any more of him, and there's never going to be a time in your life where he'll leave you, forsake you, or abandon you. 
He is always fully present with you. And there might be somebody tonight going, well, you know what? If that's true, then why don't I always sense that that's true? If God is always fully present with me, then why don't I always sense his presence in my life? I think that's a great question. And I think there's a couple basic reasons for that. The first is because of our sinfulness. When I choose to to walk my own way instead of go the, the way that God has asked me to go, I immediately create a relational barrier between me and God. It's kind of like if I'm in the room with another person that I'm at odds with. I can be in close, close proximity with that person, but relationally feel miles apart. When we choose to walk in the way of sinfulness, that doesn't mean that God is no longer with us, but it does mean that there's now a relational barrier And that's why continual confession of our sin is so important because we want to keep that close relationship with God. But I think there's another and maybe more common and obvious reason, and that's this, that we simply forget. We don't remember. We don't recognize it as often as we should. We're simply not aware of his presence like we should be. I would say that you and I, we don't need more of God. We don't need more of his presence, but we desperately need to be made more aware of his presence. And that's what tonight is really all about. So as we continue to worship Christ, the the God who gave himself to us, I hope you'll remember that his presence is with you. Would you remain seated as we sing together again?
worship a resurrected Lord. there would not remain 
Our God has robbed the grave. Our God has robbed the grave. can go ahead and take a seat for a few minutes here. You guys sound great tonight. Well, man, presence is powerful, and hopefully you've been feeling that tonight, just being present with one another. In fact, that's one of the things I love about our nights of worship, because it's a chance for us to come together and to be present with one another across all three of our campuses here today in one place, one location. We love that. And uh, we love being a church that is so passionate about the gospel. We love being a church that is passionate about making more and better followers of Jesus and taking Northridge Church to our city, taking Northridge Church into our communities through our three campuses. And the reason we do that is so that the gospel can be more accessible to people who are far from God. And so that we can have a presence as a church in those communities that we wouldn't be able to have if we were just one church in one location. And so we love that about Northridge Church. But I love our nights of worship because it's a chance for us to come together to be present with one another and to sing some songs and celebrate communion. We're going to do that here in just a minute. And as we get ready to do that, I just want to encourage you to think about a few things. Uh, the first is this. Typically when we come together and we celebrate communion, we focus and we celebrate Christ's death on the cross, what he did for us, that his body was broken for us. And we're certainly going to do that tonight. But there's also another purpose of communion that sometimes we can lose sight of. And that's communion with believers meaning being present with other believers, being with one another. Presence is powerful. In fact, I think that's why Paul encouraged the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 11. He reminded them to come together when you celebrate the Lord's table, to be present with one another. Don't do it alone. Don't do it all by yourself, but come together. Be with one another. And so that's what we want to do here in just a moment. The band, they're gonna play a song here in a second. You guys can remain seated during this song. Our uh, volunteers are going to pass out the bread and the cup. They're going to be stacked together. There's going to be two cups. Juice is going to be on top and then the cracker underneath. So make sure you get that. And if you're a follower of Christ, we would love to have you participate with us. Grab one of those. Hang on to it. After the song, we're going to come together and we're going we're gonna to participate together. But as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death, to participate in communion together, I want you to remember a few different things. Number one, celebrate Christ's death on the cross. 
celebrate the cross, celebrate that he gave his life for you and for me so that our sins could be forgiven. So celebrate the cross tonight. Number two, celebrate his presence, that he is with you. He is living in you. He is at work inside of your heart. Um, Celebrate his presence in your life. And then number three, celebrate being together as a church with your brothers and sisters in Christ. So listen to this song, listen to the words of this song and prepare our hearts as we get ready to uh, participate in communion together. It's taken me some time to believe That when you said it's done That's what you mean That when they drove the nails through your hands You did not be killed Take it back I drank the cup of death It's running through my veins I chose my pride instead Of the glory of your name All the wrath of God that I deserve words in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, it says this, for the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Would you stand with us? Let's remember who you were before we had Christ and we are now. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope and no place to begin. And your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. And my orphan heart was given a name. And my morning grew quiet, and my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, and my life began. Sing of his grace tonight. Oh, your grace. Oh, your grace. Released. Released from my chains. I'm a Rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then she
Revelation 5, we read that they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals because you were slain. And with your blood, you purchased for God persons from every tribe, language, and people, and nation. You have made them be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, to reign on the earth. And I looked and I heard the voice of angels numbering thousands upon thousands, 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And in a loud voice, they were saying, worthy, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that fills it say to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. We sing to a worthy God tonight. declaration of our surrender. God, we're yours and we belong to you. So for one more song, let's put our hands together. Thank you. 
don't think I have a voice again in you, and maybe you don't either. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a great evening.